So the last part we're gonna look at is remarks and then we'll do some practice of reading some of these pilot reports. This one you see a lot, this is AWC web. That says somebody has typed in on the Aviation Weather Center website, probably a dispatcher has relayed that information and put in the fire up. Plain language is often used in the remarks, but not always. Sometimes you have to get a bit creative with trying to figure out what they're trying to say. Um, here's an example. So airport in sight, one mile final, runway three zero right. Okay, so APT, that was not plain language. I had to figure that out, but it's usually pretty self-explanatory. Just think about what they might be saying. Here's one, bases are at 100 feet. And would that be MSL or AGL? Should say MSL. Pilot report heights are given in MSL. Base is indistinguishable, so I couldn't tell where the bases of these clouds were. It just was impossible to say. Um, this one uh, could be, this is probably put in by ATC, meaning something has been reported, reported by multiple aircraft between these two places. Um, I think it's a couple different VORs. So we have multiple aircraft reporting something. Here's one that would probably qualify as a UUA, so an urgent pyrep. Low level wind shear and they had a plus or minus 15 knots. So they had a 15 knot airspeed fluctuation from 800 feet MSL all the way to the surface. That would, that's a type of pyrep that's going to show up as an urgent pyrep. Smooth ride and then with one of our abbreviations again during descent to runway 35. Sometimes people get kind of funny and they'll come up with funny stuff like smooth like an e-ticket ride at Disneyland. I have no idea. Uh, but these are kind of fun to look for from time to time. Um, sometimes you see in the source, this, if you see something like this, this is a ATC entity entering the information. And then, like I mentioned, a dispatcher can type this in on Aviation Weather website. Here's another example of a kind of a plain language report. Um, it's actually that same, the low level wind shear part, but we also have picked up the field at 008. So we got in sight of the field at 800 feet MSL. So let's look at some practice here. Um, let's see. So here we have a few. So here we have an aircraft. So it's, uh, it reported that it saw something over this VOR. It was at 335 UTC. It was at 500 feet MSL that this was reported. This is a Learjet 35. I don't know all the aircraft types. I've gotten to know a few over the years. The sky, they found it was broken at 500 feet MSL. Remember, we're giving heights in MSL here. Also, there was more clouds that they found overcast at 1,000 feet MSL, and they got on top at 3,000 feet. All airs ragged, so very uneven layers, and it looks like they reported it while they were in a descent for runway 13 right. Okay, let's take a look at another one. Here's one at Seattle, um, and they have on the 161 degree radial at four nautical miles distance. Okay, we've got the 1306 UTC. They are at 2000 feet MSL that they're reporting this. It's a 737. Right now, they said that the sky conditions are 200 feet MSL overcast, and they got tops at 6,000 feet. The aircraft was in a climb, and it also reported, this is kind of where we get in the plain language, higher layers above, ABV, that abbreviation is above. Got another one here. This is at uh, Pueblo, Colorado, I think, on the 260 degree radial at four nautical miles. And let's skip through some of this, but we have a overcast clouds at 7,000 MSL. And we have some other information about wind here. Low level wind shear, they lost 15 knots. Hmm, okay. Um, I think this part's a typo. It's a little hard to say sometimes. Um, okay, no turbulence. It's a little odd that they're saying they had the wind shear, but they didn't have turbulence. I don't know. Uh, turbulence was forecast, but not present. Icing was forecast, but not present. And they got the field in sight on four mile final. So that's kind of like that plain language report. Here's a really crazy one that is a real fire up that my friend sent me. Um, this is a, it looks like it's a Cessna 172, severe turbulence. Remark, wife screaming in the background. 
They gained 400 feet, and it was like some kind of a squall line. I don't know what you're doing in a Skyhawk in a squall line, and the wife screaming in the background is a little scary, right? So that's some practice. So find some pyrops, practice on your own, be familiar with how to read these things. Talking briefly about aircraft reports. These can be automated fully or not. They can be augmented by people. Here's an example of one. Here we have an aircraft report. So you notice it doesn't say UA because it's not an unidentified aviator. Nope, we have it identified. It's this flight, which apparently KAI translates to Kaiser Air Flight 99. Then we have a latitude and longitude location. It was reported at 2024 UTC. This part is definitely going to be automated. It is flying at flight level 380, and the temperature is negative 55 degrees. Wind is from 279 degrees true at 41 knots. Um, here's another example of one. So you here we have United Airlines flight 1229. See, notice we're not an we're not a UA because we're not an unidentified aviator. We are identified. We're United flight 1229. Got our location here, the time, the altitude, turbulence, continuous light, occasional moderate. Now this is most likely been augmented by a person to add this occasional moderate to actually add that, that uh, turbulence qualifier. So take a look at some of these aircraft reports, practice reading these as well. It's great information, good to know what's going on out there. So make your contribution and go ahead and make pyreps as you're out flying around.